there are some interesting improvements in Next.js 14.1 and I thought we review them together in this video. So let's dive right in. We're going to review the blog post that the Next.js team put together. Now, a lot of the changes or improvements are developer experience oriented or related. For example, if you were looking to self-host or if you are self-hosting your Next.js app, there are now improved documentation for handling the cache, specifically in the app router, in your Next.js stock. So if you go down to this section, you can see there are different sections added for different variables and cache configurations for incremental static regeneration and image optimization, specifically using the middleware when you're running, uh, when you're hosting your own Next.js app, whether you're using uh, an independent Node.js server or you're using a Docker container, there's now improved documentation for that. Now, if you're using TurboPack, there has been some improvements in there. TurboPack is a replacement for Webpack. It's a Rust-based compiler. It's a still opt-in, and there has been improvements in reliability, performance, and memory usage. So if you're using it, they have improved it in this new version, but it, is, it still remains as an opt-in option, so it's not yet replacing the Webpack. Now, as far as some DX or developer experience improvements, they have changed or improved error messages or uh, stack tracing in error messages in Next.js. So for example, before, if there was a failure inside Webpack or your compiler, this is what you would see, which doesn't really tell you where this is happening actually. Whereas now, down here, you can see it's improved. The error message actually shows the component where this specific error is happening. Now, another change or improvement to developer experience or the APIs or using new APIs in the app router is that now you can use uh, the push state and the replace the state from the history object on the window. Uh, so you can just directly call these two methods um, to manipulate the history stack inside of your browser without reloading the page. So for example, if you wanted to use these two uh, to sync with the use path name and use search params, for example, to implement this sorting functionality, which is going to be a query string or a search parameter inside the URL here. We're calling this update sort function, passing it in a string of the direction or the sort order. Inside of this update sorting, we are creating uh, URL search params from the current search params object that we get out of this hook. Uh, we then set the sort to whatever sorting order that was passed to it, and then we push this new state, um, uh, which is going to just add this query string uh, at the end of our current URL because we are not changing the path here. So we can use this inside of our app router without reloading the page. And if you go to the documentation, there's actually a page dedicated to this using the native history APIs. Whether you are pushing a new state, this allows the user to nav navigate back if they wanted to, or replacing the current state, which is not going to allow the user uh, to navigate back to the previous state that they had because it replaces that state. Now, another thing that I really like about uh, logging functionality when you're running your local development server is now some data cache logging. So you can pass in a new config to your next config.js. So say logging fetches a full URL. This is going to log uh, your full URLs when you're running the development server, but also it's going to show you if you're hitting the cache or if you're skipping the cache and missing the cache. Uh, this might be helpful if you are running different strategies and you want to test and try whether or not you're using the cache um, or you're hitting the cache and this is going to actually log this information for you but uh, this option only adds this uh, cache functionality or logging if you're using the fetch and the cache for your fetch functions so i thought that was interesting now another improvement for the next image component is that you can use there's actually two things here you can use. You can uh, use the picture element now, and you don't have to use necessarily uh, the next image component. You can instead use this get image props function. 
this is why it, this is what allows you to use the picture element so as you can see here if you're using this get image props if you're passing in different props and right here if you're implementing a dark and a light version of our image depending on whether or not the user prefers a dark or light scheme so definitely read through that i think and this is going to enable us to have more use cases for the next image component for example in background images in uh, context and as i mentioned in using uh, the picture element inside of our application now the other thing that has improved significantly is a lot of bug fixes in parallel and intercepted routes now i have talked about both of these advanced routing techniques on the channel I'm going to include the link in the description or in the card above to those videos so if you want to learn what parallel routes or intercepting routes are but from a high level a parallel route allows you to simultaneously render one or more pages in the same layout so you can pull in two pages and show them inside the same layout and intercepting routes is when you intercept a route you mask the url and show the content of another page from another part of your application in the context of where the user is for example you're inside of an image gallery inside of a feed or a gallery user clicks on one single image and the image would be shown inside of a model uh, without going to that specific page so you're bringing the content of another page and showing it in the context of the gallery so they're interesting uh, patterns but they have they have had a lot of bugs and now they have improved uh, a lot of these bugs based on the community's feedback so that's as far as features dx improvements and bug fixes we had in the new release one more thing that i want to mention uh, is this next third party package if you didn't know it now supports google analytics by the way there's more improvements or additions to the documentation that you could see a list of here that i didn't uh, review so you can go through this if you were looking for a specific piece of documentation or improvement you can look here but let's go to the docs for this section let's go up all the way so if you didn't know there's this new third parties package inside of next just like how now we can host fonts using the next font now they're bringing in uh, a lot of other third party packages that you would use typically in your next.js app into the next package so this third party right now for example includes some packages from google as a third party package so you can import uh, tag manager or google analytics or google maps from this so if you haven't used it it's it's very easy to use it optimizes the script when and how it runs or how it loads so you don't have to worry about loading this script inside of your application you just import this new component pass it your id your google tag manager id or container id and then it takes care of the rest now they're adding more functionality to this third parties package but for now as you can see on the menu here we have the google tag manager we have google analytics we have google maps embed and also youtube embed this is also interesting it's using uh, another light youtube embed library which is going to result in loading your uh, videos from youtube or embedding your videos from youtube uh, faster so definitely have a look at this i'm going to have dedicated videos on the channel on adding these components to your next.js app so if this is something that interests you stay tuned but at least for now you know that you have this third parties package inside of your next.js app that allows you to add and load these scripts in a more performant optimized way instead of having to manually add these scripts to your projects now that's a wrap for this video folks I hope you had an overview of the new features, uh, bug fixes and improvements in Next.js version 14.1. If you have any questions, like always, hit me up in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.